Hello and welcome to today's webinar with IOP eBook author Professor Will Naguar. Will is Director of Global Health Catalyst at Dana Farber Harvard Cancer Center, Professor of Radiation Oncology at the Harvard Medical School and University of Massachusetts, and Medical Physicist at Brigham and Women's Hospital and Dana Farber Cancer Institute. He will be reviewing his latest book, Emerging Models for Global Health and Radiation Oncology. During the webinar, we welcome your questions, so please use the Q&A facility to send them in at any time during the talk. We will then try and answer as many as you can at the end of the presentation, and we will respond to any unanswered questions once the webinar is over. On that note, I will hand you over to Will. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Evie. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining this webinar. Um, before I start talking about the book, um, I was supposed to say a few words about myself. And um, currently, as Evie has said, I'm the director of the Global Health Catalyst Program at the Dana Farber Harvard Cancer Center. Um, I'm also a guest professor at the University of Hyderabad where we are actually working to um, establish collaborations, as you see, which are one of the key, uh, a key component of this book. I mean, how do you establish such uh, high impact collaboration? Um, I've actually had the privilege of living and working in three countries, uh, three continents in Cameroon, Germany, and the United States. Um, and lest I forget and get into trouble, I wanted to acknowledge my wife. You can see at the bottom of the screen, the left bottom, um, who has truly been uh, my better half. I also have the honor to talk about my co-author, Professor Twalib Ngomer, uh, who is arguably one of the leading minds uh, in cancer in Africa. He is a consultant currently of clinical oncology at uh, Mohas University in Tanzania. Uh, he was the founder of the main cancer center in Tanzania, which is the Ocean Road Cancer Institute. Uh, he also was the ex executive director for this uh, center from 1996 to 2014. Uh, Dr. Prof. Ngoma has been a multiple award winner and uh, actually is one of the main people who has been helping develop driving global health in radiation oncology in Africa. So the purpose of this book really is uh, twofold. One of them is really education. Um, and I think it's one of the first texts that comprehensively covers the emerging field of radiation oncology global health. Um, and the text can really facilitate education and training efforts. In fact, we will be integrating these in uh, some of the online programs that we'll be uh, establishing in education uh, in the coming months. Uh, the second point, uh, purpose of the book really is uh, in talking about the current models that uh, people are using to collaborate, um, you will see that collaboration is a major key component uh, of global health. And in particular, this will serve as a good reference guide uh, for anyone who wants to involve, get involved in uh, efforts to eliminate cancer and uh, global cancer disparities. And I want to point out that you know this is not only for radiation oncology health professionals. Uh, in fact, one of the things that we uh, have been driving recently is the fact that uh, equally important are those who are not in the field. Uh, and you'll see that in the definition of global health that I'll be talking about later on. Um, so one of the major motivations for this book is, uh, you know, the growing, the growing global cancer epidemic. Uh, according to the World Health Organization, more than 8 million people died of cancer uh, in 2015 and uh, over 14 million new cases. Uh, and part of the tragedy here really, and that's why we're thinking it's an epidemic, is because over half uh, of the cases and two-thirds of the cancer deaths are occurring in low and middle income countries. Um, so currently, actually, cancer is um, one of the leading causes of mortality, more than HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria. And so this is really uh, a main driver of global health currently. 
um, the World Health Organization uh, predicts that by 2030, there will be about 21 million new cases of cancer per year and uh, 13 million cancer deaths. And the thing here is that the greatest burden, again, is going to be in developing countries. And so this is a major challenge. Um, and you can already see from those numbers why it's called uh, it's an epidemic. Um, so really the book focuses on one area in radiation oncology, and uh, radiation oncology involves uh, one of the centerpieces using radiotherapy in treating cancer. Uh, and I just wanted to say a few words here about you know, the fact that in cancer, there are really, really currently three major uh, modalities for treating cancer. You can either go in there and cut out the tumor, which is really surgery. Um, once the cancer starts to spread, it's chemotherapy. But uh, you can also, so radiotherapy is actually used in uh, about 50 to 60 percent of uh, cancer case in treating 50 to 60 percent of cancer patients, and so it's a major modality. Um, and uh, the tragedy, also the concern here, really is that less than 10 percent of patients in developing countries have access to this. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that uh, as we go forward. Uh, finally, uh, I wanted to point out that one other motivation for this book as we go, uh, you know, is that recently a survey by a resident showed that over 90% of the residents actually want to participate in global health uh, in radiation oncology. And, uh, you know, with the increasing global uh, migration, you know, it means that uh, health practitioners now require training in global health and being able to address or take care of a diverse patient population. What we've also discovered recently is that there's growing major interest even outside of the uh, healthcare industry in engaging the diaspora um, who really are some of the brain, you know, we talk about brain drain, um, but we think that through this effort, you can actually turn that brain drain to gain against cancer. And this is one of the things that we have been uh, pushing at the Harvard Global Health Catalyst Cancer Summit. Um, the National Cancer Institute also emphasizes the importance of collaborations, um, and so this is really a growing field, uh, and uh, radiation oncology is one of the, uh, right, right at the center of that. There's also recently been, you know, greater investment in efforts to find a cure for cancer. Uh, you may be aware that in the United States, uh, President Obama announced the Cancer Moonshot Initiative in, in the State of the Union address, and since then, uh, Vice President Biden has been mobilizing uh, the people in the cancer community and out beyond that to get involved. And we think that you know uh, this will really benefit global health. So this is one of the growing areas as well. And finally, I want to mention that a part of the motivation comes from the growing recognition that. Global health is really not only for healthcare providers or people working in healthcare industry. It involves also people beyond that. You know, you can people can get involved in advocacy, uh, cancer prevention, education, and awareness. And I'll touch a little bit on that uh, as one of the components that the book addresses. Uh, in terms of research for this book, this was really something over uh, two years or three years. Um, we started at the American Association of Physicists and Medicine Conference in 2014. Um, I organized a symposium there where we actually had people, some of the best minds, talking about how we could uh, bridge these disparities. And then uh, subsequent conferences con went on to discuss a little bit more about that. Um, and at the 2015 uh, Harvard Summit, and um, you know that was when it really came out that really, there's a really great need for a book that can comprehensively cover. Uh, some of the aspects in this emerging area. Uh, obviously, uh, some of the research uh, are in publications, and one of the key publications can be found in the Red Journal, um, after, uh, which is really uh, inspired by uh, the editor, um, Anthony Zitman, who's been driving uh, global health uh, in this area. So I want to go over the chapters, uh, highlight some of the things that uh, this book covers. Um, chapter one is really a basic introduction. Um, 
so kind of telling you what the motivation, uh, some of the things that I already talked about. But quite importantly, it starts by talking about the definition of global health. And uh, I wanted to highlight that uh, during this webinar uh, in particular, that as an area for study and research and practice, that places the priority on improving health and achieving equity in health for all people worldwide. Uh, and this actually, uh, I put in board here, involves many disciplines within and beyond the health sciences. Uh, so what this really means is that, you know, um, it's not only for radiation oncologists, actually, you know, people in radiation oncology can truly partner with people beyond uh, the healthcare uh, to be able to move this forward. Now, the the because of the radiation therapy focus, I also, also want to highlight what the disparities really are uh, in this area. Uh, this illustration that you see on your screen um, is really a map that kind of illustrates uh, the uh, access to infrastructure in radiotherapy. Um, so if you are in these red countries on the map, um, you know, if you were born in one of these places, uh, that means you basically have no access to radiotherapy uh, in those countries. And as I mentioned, this is really one of the main components of cancer care. And so uh, this is one of the major disparities because just because you were born in that location, you don't have access to treatment. And so this is one of uh, uh, the, the reasons why, you know, people are rising up to say uh, something needs to change. You know, to further illustrate that, uh, I, the Professor Sen, who is the Nobel Prize economics win, uh, Nobel Prize winner in economics here at Harvard, um, you know, at age 19 he was diagnosed with cancer, and uh, he went on to be treated with radiotherapy. Um, and because of that treatment, uh, he was uh, he lived long enough to be able to uh, make significant contributions to win the Nobel Prize. And all of us now benefit from those contributions. You know, if you can actually go back to that red map, you know, um, you know, there could be people in those countries that could also win the Nobel Prize, but because they don't have access to, you know, to treatment, you know, we we may never know. Um, and the the other really important thing that um, was highlighted in the 2015 uh, Harvard Summit was the fact that you know, um, and this is highlighted in chapter one of this book, is really that, you know, the contributions to this field can really come uh, at various levels, you know. So right from uh, the institutional level, um, you can have, you know, major institutions like Harvard and other country, other institutions in developing countries working together. You can also have uh, right down to the volunteer or individual level where even if you are not in the field, you can still create awareness and advocacy and drive action, um, you know, and there are some of the ways that um, this book highlights some of the ways that if you are really interested in participating in this field, you know, you can get involved. Um, one of the challenges, which so chapter two covers the challenges and the new opportunities. So, you know, uh, opportunities, the number of funding opportunities, scholarships, you know, ways that people can get involved. Um, but, you know, these, these opportunities are really uh, to address a number of challenges. And I'm just going to talk about, highlight just three of them. Um, uh, that way, uh, there are many more of those in the book. Um, one of them is the lack of awareness. And again, I highlight an example um, from Africa, where one of the major challenges is that most of the Africa's over 2,000 languages do not even have a word for cancer. Um, and so, you know, if you don't have a word for cancer, then it's very difficult to even start to address it. And so, you know, this is an opportunity. And in this picture you see below here, um, uh, we have uh, Harriet. Harriet Shangarai is one of the people who's been working with us on this. She actually has a blog that has, uh, you know, um, been creating awareness uh, and has thousands and thousands of followers, you know, but she's basically creating awareness in Swahili. Um, so, you know, people people can get involved even just, you know, being able to communicate, um, you know, the importance of or the awareness and education on cancer uh, to many people. That would be a big, big uh, contribution to this effort. 
Um, another challenge highlighted in the book, obviously, is the infrastructure. Um, some of these pictures you see here are from developing countries um, where they still use very uh, old 1965 machines. Um, and, you know, even just being di the diagnostic uh, infrastructure is not even, uh, you know, one of the, it's not even available. So you can really be diagnosed in many of these areas if you are, we have cancer in those areas. So uh, this is a big challenge. And this, the way to address this obviously includes uh, the financing um, and also developing much more lower cost uh, technologies or portable technologies in this area, something that's addressed in the subsequent chapter. Uh, even quite, even more important, I think, is the human resources. You know, you really need people to be able to drive this. And so it's important that we need to train uh, more people. You know, in some countries, you don't even have uh, somebody in a radiation oncologist or medical physicist. You don't have those people. And so we need to actually look into building more uh, human capacity, and um, which is the education effort, some of which is highlighted. Um, this book is going to help uh, towards that. Now, chapter three uh, talks about once you've decided, you know, you have these opportunities and you really want to get involved. Uh, what are the models? What are, what have other people done before? You know, what are the lessons that they've learned? You know, what model is best for you? You know, uh, do you want to go at a volunteer level? Do you want to start a training partnership, which means, you know, may, mainly uh, maybe two, two, two parties are involved, uh, two institutions, uh, maybe two individuals, and or you want to get involved in a consortium, which would involve multiple partners. Whatever model you pick, some of the common things that um, uh, we found is that you have to go through a number of phase, phases in establishing uh, collaboration that will be truly high impact. Um, and this involves maybe just exploring first, looking at what the gaps are uh, in where you want to actually do this collaboration, what are your goals, you have to plan that out. And then once you've done that, you know, you can go through the bonding phase, which essentially says, okay, you know, I'm ready to go. You sign the formal agreement to start and in sometimes you then, then from there you go into the implementation and evaluation. Um, you share some of the lessons, which is one of the things that the book does uh, talks about. Uh, from the, the research really comes from looking at what other people have done and done well. You share that information, um, and then other people can uh, get involved in the scaling. So you can scale that to be able to reach uh, other areas. So. Uh, this, this, the, the research for this actually there are a lot of a number of initiatives that are emerging uh, by different um, uh, at different levels at the volunteer level at individual levels at uh, the organization levels cross institutional level you know so some of these these were basically included in the in the current models of global radiation oncology so in looking at this we actually looked at a wide variety of uh, of currently going, ongoing uh, partnerships. Okay, one of my favorite chapters in the book really is the one for information and communication technologies. Uh, and uh, the, the interesting thing there is that, you know, really uh, these are considered part of the future. This webinar is a very good example of how we can actually employ information and communication technologies, which include the internet, uh, you know, mobile phones, and, and, and what have you. So you can use these technologies today, Skype, uh, FaceTime. You can be able to use these things now to actually reach populations 4,000 miles away from you. Uh, so what that means is that in global health, you really do not have to travel to contribute. In fact, there are people, uh, you know, we have now who can, you know, participate in global health, who you know, you can just dedicate 30 minutes of your time during the weekend, and you can uh, teach a course online, or you could uh, review a patient plan, and so you know you could actually save a life or contribute to saving a life uh, far long distance away from you without traveling. So this is one of the the things that are high, this in this chapter, you know, some of the ways that people can participate in global health uh, using information and communication technology technologies are highlighted. 
and uh, these are the different areas you can have cancer care if you just want to help uh, in the clinic in clinical care or if you want to teach or participate in education efforts what are the uh, ways that you can do this using information and communication technologies you know looking at research and obviously outreach if you uh, want to participate in outreach as a non if you're not even in healthcare you can still participate using information and communication technologies um, I just quickly show here a uh, number of examples. So currently we do at the Dana Farber Harvard Cancer Center there is a collaboration with uh, Rwanda and uh, you know so people use information and communication technologies like uh, uh, this very platform we're using for this webinar. You can actually um, have remote consultations, you can have telemedicine, you can have video conferences. In fact, uh, there are regular tumor boards and chat rounds that you can discuss very complex uh, cancer patient cases. Um, and today, in radiation oncology, we actually have uh, software platforms that can allow you to do, do treatment planning uh, and evaluation, um, you know, even while, you know, 4,000 miles away. So basically, you know, you can contribute using information and communication technologies. Uh, in research, uh, there are other ways, there are also ways you can participate. Um, you know, you can, uh, with a computer now and in developing country, actually participate in research. You can use Monte Carlo simulations or, you know, treatment, develop computer programs that can help um, in treatment planning or research. And, um, and so currently I actually have, uh, as an example, a PhD student who is in Kuwait and who we meet every day uh, on Skype and I mean every week on Skype to review the work that she's doing and uh, so you can essentially mentor uh, a student uh, you know who lives far away from you today and that's really made possible that by information and communication technologies another good area obviously is crowdfunding um, you know with one thousand dollars you know, you know you can actually use that you can actually sponsor uh, maybe a PhD student or postdoc in developing country, it can go far away, uh, long, a longer way than uh, even in the developed countries. And so people are developing ways that you can crowdfund, you can contribute $25 or $100, and you can actually participate in uh, developing uh, in research that can actually help advance the field. Uh, also, education obviously is, is crucial and um, this book highlights some of those ways, and we want to integrate this book also in an online teach training platform. But the book highlights the number of uh, a number of uh, ongoing programs in radiation oncology that are delivered online. And uh, you know, a major one of very good example is the one by the United Nations uh, International Atomic Energy Agency. Um, it's called the VUCC Net, and it currently has a pilot program in Africa um, where you know you can log on with your computer and you can actually get uh, uh, trained you can get online training modules you can access those in radiation oncology and so this pilot program is a very good example the other ones that are being developed uh, currently developing a medical physics program uh, in partnership with uh, the, in Tanzania uh, and there are many of these massive online uh, uh, programs that you know, people are using today. Harvard X is one of the examples as well. So there are really good ways that people can get involved in um, in training, in teaching, building human capacity, using information and communication technologies. Uh, finally, in terms of outreach, you know, we can talk about um, how people who are not even involved in um, in in healthcare can get involved as well using information and communication technologies. You know, in cancer prevention, in many developing countries, they have, uh, they have phones, mobile phones. Um, you know, one study uh, by the United Nations actually says that in some developing countries, people may have phones and may not have a toilet. You know, and so this creates a very good access point where, you know, people can to push notifications. You can send messages about uh, education information about cancer and create awareness. Um, you know, one of the outcomes of the uh, uh, the Harvard uh, Global Health Catalyst Summit this year was, you know, the diaspora creating a social media network um, 
on WhatsApp and other areas where they can actually, um, you know, get involved in cancer prevention and awareness and advocacy. Um, you know, you can also engage, you know, people who are, you know, famous like athletes, you know, um, and uh, we had we've had a number of journalists who are amplifying this in the media. Um, so this is really there's a really a big gap in awareness and education that even people who are outside the field can get involved and also highlight the importance of radiotherapy, for example, um, you know, establishing these mini governments in developing countries can establish this uh, are not really aware of these benefits. And so, you know, this is really um, uh, another way that people can get uh, involved through, through in, in, in collaborations with cancer health professionals. Um, another topic, another chapter, this chapter five is pretty close to my heart, partly because, uh, you know, even when you establish this infrastructure, you still want to make sure that everybody can access it. Uh, so the IAEA has really been, through their PACT program, has been talking to the major manufacturers like Varian and Electra and Tim Best, um, you know, to be able to develop lower cost, more affordable uh, technologies for radiotherapy. And uh, obviously, as this, uh, this book highlights some of these technologies and also, you know, what is currently ongoing, what other people are developing, you know, scientists and engineering are continuously innovating and trying to bring up new technologies that can make this more uh, affordable. And so this is also a very, this chapter is quite an interesting read, and this is something that's going to keep evolving. Um, over the past, uh, just this past week, we've had a number of people contacting, talk, sharing more about uh, some of these emerging technologies. And so I think that, um, uh, you know, as many more people get involved, this is really going to be uh, one of the excellent areas where uh, we continue to grow collaborations. Now, chapter six uh, really uh, is a practical guide. So this makes more recommendations. After talking to a lot of people who have been involved in global health, you know, this chapter talks about the recommendations in terms of culture and ethics. You know, I like this picture where you see somebody actually blending in, uh, in a culture, in African culture. Uh, you know, so some of the things that you know, uh, this kind of cultural aspects may may help make things uh, even more higher impact. Or facilitate things. So this book talks about the recommendations once you started um, getting involved here, what are the things you need to think about. Um, and finally, uh, chapter seven, you know, looks for, looks is a more forward-looking chapter. Uh, it kind of summarizes, it looks into the recent uh, Lancet Oncology Commission report on radiotherapy and thinks about ways that, you know, people can actually get involved to implement uh, the action items on these uh, in this uh, report, their recommendations, and uh, I just highlight some of the key things which the ch previous chapters have covered. You know, the training component, developing innovative technologies. You know, uh, advocacy, which anybody can get involved with. In, you know, the planning uh, is very important in the models that uh, we are doing these collaborations, and uh, obviously financing is going to be key, and the the their recommendations on how you can actually generate some of this financing to make sure that, you know, it's easier to establish more of this infrastructure in developing countries. Um, also going forward, one of the last things to close with is really to say that uh, there's going to be uh, a need for collaborations. Collaboration is going to be key. Uh, we will continue to uh, address as the cancer epidemic grows, it means they have to get more people involved. You know, so the Global Health Catalyst Summits are going to be an integral part of that. There are many more of these Global Health Symposia uh, and conferences in upcoming conferences in, I mean, symposia in different conferences that are up, coming up in this year and also in 2017. Um, and uh, finally, in summary, I wanted to say that this book really is uh, one of the comprehensive texts, the first comprehensive text on these emerging field of global radiation oncology. Uh, I, you know, we strongly believe that uh, it's going to be an excellent resource for um, uh, for high impact collaboration models. If you want to get involved in cancer care research, education, or outreach, uh, this will be a very good resource for you to, to look at. Um, we do plan to integrate this, as I said, in the upcoming months in online learning 
and uh, it will be a major feature of the upcoming conferences and uh, summits. So to end, uh, I'd like to acknowledge some people who really directly contributed to this book, uh, uh, Anthony Zidman, uh, I mean, thoroughly from across the world, a lot of people contributed to this, and I just wanted to acknowledge that. Uh, obviously, the excellent IOP team that has hosted this webinar, uh, thank you for uh, your attention. Brilliant. Thank you very much. That was really interesting. Well, thank you. I hope you um, hope you enjoyed the the experience there of um, giving an overview of your book. I've had a couple of uh, questions come in, so I shall just start by by asking those for you. So uh, the first one is, um, what do you think the future of cancer research looks like? Um, it's a good question, and I think um, I'll answer it in two parts. One is the um, to highlight again the Obama uh, Biden moonshot initiative in the United States as an example of where you know people are now really coming together they are recognizing that cancer needs to be addressed and so the future of cancer research um, you know really you know can see that it's going to involve a lot more people uh, more resources are being mobilized towards that uh, one area uh, to say, the second part of my answer is to say, in radiotherapy, uh, a lot of the developments in the past years have been on, you know, how you can make, uh, you know, margins or mar margins more better, you can make treatments more conformer. Um, and I think that uh, somebody has said recently that one of the things we want to look at now is in terms of access and affordability and cost. And which is one of the things that the book really addresses in Chapter 5 uh, about the lower cost technologies. And so I think that going forward for global health, especially in resource poor settings, we need to think about uh, some of the direction of the research and efforts would be in developing, you know, lower cost technologies, uh, even as we work, you know, through initiatives like the Obama-Biden Obama initiative to find a cure for cancer, we also want to make sure that, you know, uh, you know that is can be accessed by people from different um, different parts of the world, no matter your economic status. You know. Yeah. Okay. I think um, that leads. Well, you have kind of already answered it because we've had another question which asks about how you feel the area of global radiation oncology has grown and why it's grown so much in recent years. So you kind of touched upon that a bit. So did you want to ex explain any more or? Oh, you mean why why it's growing? Why radiation oncology is growing in this area? Yeah, of global yeah. Health? How, why do you yeah. feel that? Yeah. Yeah. So part of it is just those disparities. You know, I mean, a lot more recently. You know, and I think uh, a number of people like uh, Mary Gospodorovic in uh, Canada. You know, the Lancet Oncology publication. Some of those people and the Red Journal have been beating the drum on this and saying, you know, we have to take make focus more on radiotherapy as well. If you're using this for 50% of cancer patient treatment, you know, we have to address this issue. And so as these people have been amplifying and talking more about this, and people now are aware more of the disparities here, you know, there's this growing movement where uh, even residents, you know, most of the residents want to participate in global health. And so, you know, going forward in the future, you know, that's why this book is really good also, because going, going towards the future is ni nice for anybody who wants to get involved to look at the state of the art and see how they can get involved, you know, mm -hmm. what are the opportunities, you know, and all of that. So, um, so yeah, so that's one of the major uh, factors that has been co uh, contributed to this. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, I had um, another question on um, the something you touched upon in the book. So, can you elaborate a little more on the sports and athlete collaborative advocacy that you've mentioned? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one of them, uh, the areas that we've been looking at and uh, has been really applauded by a number of people. So recently at the uh, 2016 Harvard Global Health Catalyst Summit in Boston, um, which we hosted, we actually have been looking at uh, ways that we can collaborate with people outside of the field of radiation oncology. Um, and one of, the place, uh, one of the areas that was really applauded was you know, the partnership with sports, you know. We had, you know, uh, 
colleagues, you know, um, I work with one of a colleague and actually a friend, uh, Dr. Tommy Schaefers, and he was really instrumental in bringing these, bringing athletes together who have stories in cancer, but also uh, can really be good um, partners in creating awareness and education and advocacy in this area, and even helping to, you know, mobilize support for this uh, area. So that's just one example. And we've also done research. We know that um, outreach to organizations like uh, religious organizations, you know, uh, people have a lot of respect um, for the, you know, the people who lead the bishops and the pastors and all those, you know, for them getting involved in this area, uh, they can actually create a lot of education and awareness and get people to pay more attention uh, yeah. to cancer prevention. <clears throat> so, so going forward, you know, I think, you know, we need all these partners. Um, and uh, I should mention one more, which is the diaspora, <laughs> uh, because that's a brain drain, you know. Um, talk, people have been saying, okay, a lot of people get trained in developing countries and they leave for Europe and America. Uh, but this, you know, this book highlights some of the ways in which, you know, even people who are abroad can get involved, yeah. you know, to, to, to help their developing countries. Great. Thank you. Um, we've had a couple of questions that are asking about um, getting involved themselves. So uh, one was based, one question asked, how do we get local hospital administrators and the decision makers? So basically the, the financial controllers, how do we allow to, to get some time for the employees to contribute to global, global health partnerships? Have you got any advice there? Yeah, so that that's that's a really good question also because um, the Lancet Oncology Commission report does talk a little bit about financing and getting these people involved. Um, at the Harvard Summit we had recently, we actually had, uh, I'll give one example, we had the uh, one of the directors for the uh, hospital in, in, in Cameroon who was here and, and, and what what we basically did was talked about through a roadmap, you know, so this, they were trying to develop a roadmap for establishing a cancer center there. And so, you know, through that collaborative atmosphere, they were able to learn, um, you know, we developed a model that can be used like a roadmap to establish that. And then importantly, you have to think about the financing of that. Mm. And the Lancet Oncology Commission report uh, talks about some of the innovative financing mechanisms um, that can be, get, be involved, things like diaspora bonds and, um, you know, getting the governments involved. If you create more advocacy and awareness, uh, then hopefully the governments can get involved, you know, and support some of these efforts. So I yeah. think engaging these people is very important. Um, and uh, in some of these conferences that I've been, been having, that's why we've been reaching out to them. Okay, excellent. I think the other, the, the other question we've had is very, it's fairly similar actually, on, on a very similar theme. Um, they're suggesting there's obviously a lot of people out there that want to get involved but just don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. So um, if there are any specific outlets where people could perhaps start towards um, volunteer or donation opportunities, um, things like that, is there any kind of um, anything there that you might be able to advise? Yes, um, one very good uh, reference point is the you know, in the United States, I know for sure the National Cancer Institute Center for Global Health has very good, uh, you know, connections. I mean, information on how people can get involved. We are also now have a platform that we're launching. It's called the Global Health Catalyst platform itself, and it really makes it easier. You know, you know, it kind of takes the book and also the lessons we've learned and integrates in such a way that you know, if you want to participate. You can go in, go, you can just sign on to the platform and you can see what are the opportunities, you know, what can you do to get, to get involved. Um, in particular, we highlight the information and communication technology component. So, which means that, you know, you can basically sit in London, you know, you can, can help somebody in Bangladesh, you know. Uh, you know so, so this, 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 uh, this is one of the platforms that, you know, I definitely want to mention. Um, mm. And uh, we will be having another Harvard Global Health Catalyst Summit next year as well, and we'll keep, you know, um, you know, this is a very good place where you can come and meet all the yeah. most of the leaders in this area, um, so and get involved. Excellent, excellent. That sounds really good. Um, we've got time for I think one or two, um, probably two more questions. So just quickly, so. Um, 
how enthusiastic are the countries which will mostly benefit from this, and how how can their government how how can the government be brought on board to realise that cancer needs attention? Yeah, so let me start with the last part. <laughs> how can okay. the government? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's so important. I mean, I think you know that is so important. Getting the if you want to make it sustainable, you know, you have to have a national cancer control plan, which means that that really uh, the government is crucial in establishing these plans and. Uh, so advocacy is key, you know, so anybody, you know, from these countries, you know, can really, should really try to get involved in the advocacy efforts, um, you know, and, and that means also educating some of these, uh, you know, policy makers about, you know, the importance of cancer, the epidemic that's coming up, um, you know, what, it, what the investment in radiotherapy, you know, one of the perceptions in most governments and developing countries is that, you know, they don't even they think radiotherapy is too expensive. It turns out that, and that's shown by the Lancet Oncology Report, it turns out that it's actually one of the most affordable methods for addressing cancer, you know, mm. more affordable than even, you know, chemother chemotherapy. And so there's a lot of education and awareness that needs to go and advocacy, obviously, to some of these governments. Now, in terms of how many are actually interested in doing this, there's an increasing number that are doing that, you know, um, we actually uh, uh, have a number of so these leaders, and wherever you've seen the government officials, where the government that's interested and involved, you've seen really, really good uh, transformation of the healthcare system. I just named two examples. One is Rwanda, where you know they have you have the Minister of Health who's been very, very engaged in this, and now Rwanda is like a model, essentially in in Africa for addressing cancer, the cancer situation. And that's a country that had the genocide, you know, uh, mm -hmm. in 1994, you know, and now they have become like a, a shining light for other people to copy. Uh, another example, um, obviously, is the, in Nigeria, where, um, uh, well, that still needs to be uh, implemented. The, the, the new uh, government actually is planning to establish seven new cancer centers, and, you know, so, so and that's partly because the, one of the, the ministers was actually the president of the uh, African Organization for Research and Training in Cancer. So he is aware of this burden. So, you know, which brings me back to the first point, uh, education and awareness. Yeah, okay. I, I'm really sorry, but I think that that was the last question we're going to have time to answer. Um, there are a couple more, that, there are a few more that we've had come through. So um, what we'll do, if it's okay, I will, um, I will email them over to you after the after the after the webinar. Um, well, and we'll get some answers, and then we'll put them up on our um, uh, website on IOP Publishing, and I'll notify. <clears throat> excuse me, I'll be able to notify the the listeners to the webinar that those have been answered. Um, so I'd just like to to say thank you very much. Um, it's been really interesting, really interesting webinar, and I hope everybody else has has found that too. Um, if you could, if you could rate the webinar, the, the, that would be really useful. It would help us um, and help other people who are going to be listening in the future. Um, and don't forget to tell your colleagues it will be available to listen on demand um, in the next couple of hours, um, where you'll be able to find the, the link from IP Science on ipscience.org forward slash books forward slash author hyphen webinars. And your book is uh, available to download on IP Science now also. So thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you very much for organizing this. No problem. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah.